Hello everyone, it's Nina. Thanks so much for joining me today for another Studio Monday video. Today I'm going to be featuring some clearly besotted stamps and I'll be showing you how to create a really fun window pop-up card. This card is super easy to create and it also features a couple of really fun interactive elements including a pop-up stand and also a window that lets you see onto the inside of the card. We're going to be combining the Clearly Besotted stamps with a couple of other different products and I'm going to be walking you through the steps on how I created these three cards. I've got my images from the Clearly Besotted Best Friend stamp set. This is one of the newest stamp sets from Clearly Besotted. I'm going to be stamping them onto some white cardstock using my Mini Misty stamping tool and some Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Dye Ink. Now you'll see I stamped a bunch more images than I actually used. This is because I wasn't really sure at first which images I wanted to use for my cards. I ended up deciding to go ahead and use the cat with the mouse, the cat with the dog, and the fox with the sheep. Now I'm going to be coloring these images with my Copic markers. I'm going to let you watch the coloring and I'll come back in a little bit when we go ahead to start the rest of the card. If you're not interested in the coloring, I'll have an annotation listed below on where you can fast forward to go ahead and start the rest of the card process. Alrighty, now that we've finished up our coloring, it's time to go ahead and cut these little images out. There are coordinating dies for these stamps, but I want to just go ahead and fussy cut them here. So I'm cutting them out with my fine tip scissors from Cutter B, and I'm just carefully going around each image and turning my paper as I cut. And this will help give you a nice clean cut along the edges of your image. Now it's time to go ahead and start building our window pop-up piece. This particular part is going to be the window. I've got some Strathmore Bristol paper that I've cut down to four and a quarter by three and a half inches. These cards are not going to be quite A2 size, they'll be a little bit smaller. 
I'm going to take those papers and the Pretty Pink Posh window frame die and I'm going to line this up right in the center area of this paper. It doesn't have to be exact, but it's in that general vicinity of the center. And I'm going to run it through my Big Shot machine. Now, I want to do a partial die cut for this because I do not want the bottom area of this die to cut because I want this to be our little window flap. So I'm making sure I don't line up this cutting plate along the bottom portion of the die. That'll make sure that, that area doesn't cut and we will be able to score along that area to go ahead and create our window frame. So here I'm going to remove the die and you can see it did not cut that bottom portion of the die and now I'll be able to score this so we can use it as a window flap. I'll go ahead and do, repeat this for all three panels that I've cut down. Next I'm going to put them into my Martha Stewart scoring board and I'm going to score this right along the 7 8 inch line of my scoring board. Now the 7 8 mark on this particular scoring board is where my dies ended up lining up for the scoring lines. However, if you maybe didn't get them right in the exact center area that I did, maybe slightly down or up, you might have a different scoring line. So just figure out where you need to have the scoring line along the bottom portion of your die cut area. And now you can see our window opens and closes really well. It's so perfect and so fun. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this for the other panels I've cut down as well. Next what I need to do is I need to start die cutting elements for my scene. So here I've got the Trees in the Forest die set from My Favorite Things. I'm going to be die cutting this from some Strathmore Bristol Smooth Paper. The reason I'm using the Bristol Smooth Paper over regular cardstock for this is because these interactive cards will encounter a lot of wear because you'll be opening and closing things and moving things around and I want to make sure that these hold up well. So I'm using the heavier cardstock, or in this case Bristol Paper, to achieve that more sturdy build. So I'll run this through my Big Shot machine a couple of times until I have a bunch of different trees and branches. And then I'm going to go ahead and also die cut some grass borders that will be used along the bottom portion of my scenes on my window cards. And these grassy border dies are also from my favorite things. I'll have all the products that I'm using listed in the video description and also on the Simon Says Stamp blog. So if you're interested in anything that I've used for these cards, feel free to head on over there to check that out. Now after I've die cut the grass hills, I want to die cut them with the window frame. And this is because I want them to be the exact same size as the window frame that we're putting them onto. And I also want them to have the stitching detail. So I'll go ahead and run that through so that way it cuts it down. And I'll repeat that for all the other grassy borders that I've die cut as well. So you can see here how it creates that nice finishing stitching detail. Really finishes off this die cut. Now I needed to add color to these white pieces. So I originally was thinking I might use some distress inks, but then I thought, you know what? I think I want to use my Copics for this. And I want to show you how I used my Copics to color in these, these big die cuts. Now what I did is I used my chisel nib often because this helps me put down a lot more color a lot more faster. And then I'm using my brush nibs for particularly the grass on the grassy borders that I've created. And I'm just adding some flicks of color to be the grass blades. I'm using a mixture of different greens to go ahead and give me that variegated look for the grass. And then I'll also bring in some darker color along the bottom to kind of add a little bit of extra shading and just give this a little bit more extra depth. So I really think this adds a lot more dimension to the grass and you can see how it adds so much detail to this otherwise pretty flat die cut. If you don't feel like coloring, you can go ahead and just cut this from some colored cardstock to make the process a lot faster. Now I also want to color in the trees and the branches with my Copic markers and I also want to add some extra detail to them to go ahead and give them a more realistic and textured look. So I'm taking the chisel nib first to all of my tree trunks and I'm doing very random flicks across them and then I also blended that out with my lightest color and you can see that creates a really funky variegated look. However, we're going to make this look intentional and realistic by taking the Copic Various Blender and a piece of felt and we're going to dab that colorless blender all over these tree trunks. And you're going to see how it creates this mottled textured look to the tree trunks and blends those colors that we've added on top together really well and adds so much texture to the trees. And it's such a fun technique to really add some de details to your coloring. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the tree tops. I'm taking some green markers and coloring them in. I'm going to add some shading. And I'm using the chisel nib again, like I said, because this is helping me put down color a lot faster. And I'm going to be blending this out pretty smooth and adding the texture then over top. So I'm not worried about the shading having any streaks from the chisel nib. I'm going to go ahead and color all of them in. And once I've done that, I'm going to take the colorless blender once again. And I'm going to add that same texture using the felt over top of the trees. 
Now, another thing you can do is you can use other different types of cloth to do the same effect. You don't have to use felt. I used felt because I like the texture of it, but you could use a paper towel, you could use a rag, you could use anything really. And I think it'd be fun to experiment with the different types of materials to go ahead and create different looks because the colorless blender will sit and soak into the cloth differently depending on what you're using. So here's a close up of the finished pieces. You can see how it adds a lot of neat texture to the images and I really think this helps make a more realistic scene. I'm going to start working on building my scene here. I've got my window frame panel covered with a piece of white cardstock tucked behind the little flap. And I'm just coloring the flap only with some Peacock Feathers Distress Ink just to create a little bit of sky. I'm doing a little bit of an ombre style here where I'm just adding some color along the bottom portion and let it fade up to white towards the top because I don't want the sky to be a solid blue. So I'll go ahead and add some water splatters to give a little bit of texture. And then I'll go ahead and remove all the masks and you can see how it creates this gorgeous ink blended sky that is sitting only on the window flap, which is perfect. To build my scene, I'm taking a piece of foam tape onto the back side of my grass and popping that up. If you don't want to use the foam tape, just go ahead and apply this down onto your window frame using some liquid glue. I like to have a little bit of dimension, especially on my scene cards. And make sure that when you're attaching your scene elements to not put them onto the score line because you want this to still be able to open and close. So you can see here, I put this just above the score line and now my window panel can still open and close perfectly. I'm going to start attaching all of my trees now with some liquid adhesive. I'm just playing around with the placement, making sure I have them right. And then I'll go ahead and apply that liquid glue down to hold the trees to the card. I'm allowing the trees to overlap the window frame because this is going to open up eventually and we'll be able to stand up and I want these trees to be able to kind of extend the scene beyond the window frame itself. So this is why I'm making sure that they overlap the window frame. I'm also going to pop the cat up off of my card using some foam tape and I just put a little bit of liquid glue along the bottom portion of the cat's body just to make sure it stays flat onto the grass panel that we applied down. And I did this for all the animals. I built all the scenes the exact same way and you can see here, now I'm taking some pretty pink posh flowers and sequins and I'm going ahead and gluing these down to add some extra details to my scene. I really think these cute little flowers look fabulous inside the trees. They kind of help make the trees look a little bit more realistic and dimensional. I'm using PPA matte adhesive for this, but you can use any type of liquid glue you prefer. Okay, so now it's time to finish working on the window and build the little stand that will allow our card to pop up. So here I've got a piece of Nina cardstock that I've scored to a card base and I've laid flat onto my Big Shot and I'm lining up the die into the center area of my card. Now I'm also making sure it lines up perfectly with my scene panel and this is just going to help me to make sure that I have this right in the center area. I'm going to die cut this fully, there's no partial die cutting here, I'm just making a window into the center of our card. And I also want to add a little bit of detail using the basic stitch line dies from My Favorite Things, just adding a double stitch line around a whole entire portion of this card panel. So you can see here I'm just moving it around to each side until I have all four sides of this card covered with that fun stitching detail. To attach our scene, I'm going to go ahead and put some strong double sided adhesive on the back side of our scene panel. And once I have that covered with the adhesive, I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing. I'm going to apply it down on top of our card panel, making sure that I line up the window areas together because this is important. We want the window areas to be lined up perfectly so that way our card will open and close and pop up perfectly. So you're here you can see our card has our window intact and now it's time to go ahead and attach our pop-up piece. So this is the negative portion of the card panel that we die cut. You can see I scored it and applied a little bit of adhesive to the top portion of the score line. This is going to attach to the back side of our little flap here. And once we have it attached down, I'm just making sure I get this lined up right. I found the best way to do this is to go ahead and turn it sideways here and just lay that down. Once we have that attached down, we can go ahead and stand this up now and our card will have a pop-up feature. So here you can see, here's the card, has the window that looks into the inside of the card. And then it has this little flap that can stand up and pop up the card to create this really cute display. I think this is so much fun and such a fun way to make use of dies in a little bit more of a non-traditional sense. This is a really fun interactive card that I think so many different people would love. The other great thing about it is that it folds down flat so there is no bulk that's going to hinder your mailing process. 
Now I also wanted to add some sentiments. I added a sentiment to the inside so that way when you open up the window portion, you'll be able to see this fun sentiment along the inside. And I think the fact that it says unexpected friendships are the best ones is a really kind of fun sentiment to match up with this card because this card is a little bit unexpected. So here you can see the way that you can pull up the flap to see the inside and you can close it down. And I also added another sentiment from that same best friend stamp set that says better together. And I heat embossed that onto a piece of pink cardstock. And then I also stamped a little heart along the bottom portion of it as well. So here's a close up look at the pop up feature of these cards. I just love how this allows you to have a really fun interactive card and also gives you a way to be able to have a card that the recipient can use as a display feature. This is really, really fun and I hope this has given you some ideas to try doing this as well with your dies. Here's another close up look of, of the inside portion of the card. Again, this window frame is so much fun and really adds a nice unexpected touch to the card. So I hope this has given you some ideas on how to use your dies and stamps to go ahead and create some really fun pop-up window scenes. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And head on over to the Simon Says Stamp blog where you can get more information on this card, including still pictures and products used. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can connect with us on social media at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, as well as our blog. Thanks so much for watching.